everybody and welcome back to another book stream of the fires of merlin every night we read a chapter or two of a book out loud and tonight we are on chapter 15 of book three called the fires of merlin in the last in the last chapter merlin got the power to turn into a deer from Aramon, who is part of the deer people in Halia, who is kind of mistrustful of Merlin, but um, they're going to help him on his quest. So, chapter 15, The Meaning in the Tracks. The sun had nearly reached the horizon when Aramon turned his great rack toward the corridor of mist that I knew marked the banks of the river unceasing. As I followed, the rush and splatter of rapids grew louder, Arms of mist encircled me. Slowing my gait, I realized that the stag had brought us to the crossing that I knew well. The same strange longing I had felt before with Rhea to see the great boulders at the river's edge welled up in me again. Though I could hear the crashing waters plainly, I could not yet see the river through the nodding mist. Aramon and Halia, their, town, their tan coats shining with sweat, trotted to a patch of dark green reeds. Affectionately, Halia nudged her brother's shoulder with her own. Then, lowering their heads, they began browsing on the, browsing on the shoots. When I approached, the stag lifted his rack and greeted me with an approving nod. You are learning to run, young hawk. I am learning to listen. Halia, seeming to ignore us, ripped out a tuft of reeds. Her jaws crunched noisily. I, too, began nibbling at the reeds. Though they tasted almost bitter, I could feel new strength in my limbs almost instantly. Even the velvet covering of my antlers seemed to tingle. I took another, larger bite. While munching, I nodded approvingly. What is, crunch, 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 this reed? Eelgrass, Aramon replied between bites. From the days when my clan of deer people lived by the sea. Feel the texture on your tongue? It's like the dried skin of an eel. He tore out some more shafts and chews pensively for a while. Although we no longer live by the shore, we have kept the reed's name and many uses. It is woven into our baskets, our curtains, and our clothing. Shaved, pounded, and mixed with hazelnut oil, it starts our fires on winter evenings. It greets our young as a blanket at birth and sends them on the long journey as a funeral shawl at death. His black nose nestled another tuft. It's best to use all, though, is simply as food. It's best use of all, though, is simply as food. Suddenly, Halia bellowed in pain. She leaped into the air, shaking her head wildly. Even as she landed, Aramon was at her side, stroking her neck with his nose. She continued to cast her head about, whimpering. What is it, my sister? I must have bitten. Oh, it aches. A stone or something. Broke a tooth, I think. Quivering, she opened her mouth. Blood covered her one of her blood covered one of her rear teeth. A trickle ran down her lip. Oh, it hurts. Throbs. She stamped her hoof. Why now? Aramon glanced worriedly at me. I don't know how to treat such a wound. Halia, still casting her head, kicked at the reeds. I will go eh, to Miak the Learned. Learned, probably. He will too far, interrupted the stag. Miak's village is more than a full day from here. A, a shudder coursed through her. Then maybe it will uh, heal on its own in time. No, no, declared Aramon. You must find help. But where? Do I just go wandering? She closed her eyes tightly. As she reopened them, tears gathered on her lashes. I had wanted to stay with you. Wait, I declared. I may not have any magic of my own, but I knew, don't, do know a little about healing. No, shrieked Talia. I won't be healed by him. Aramon gaze, fixed his gaze on hers. Let him try. But he might, she shivered. He's a man. Cautiously, she curled her tongue to caress the broken tooth. Oh, Aramon. Bobbing her head, she said nothing for a long moment. At last, she asked weakly, You really trust him? I do. All right, then, she whispered. Let him try. My hoof stomped hard. Hands. I need hands. How do I change? Just start walking. 
Aramon answered, and will yourself to change back. Though my heart ached at losing my newfound senses, even for a moment, I turned back toward the lands we had bounded across. I strode into the curtains of mist, trying to recall just where I had seen a mass of yellow curled leaves, the plant my mother called Hurt Man's Blanket. Many times I had seen her use it to deaden pain, though never in a tooth. I could only try and hope. After a few steps, my hooves started to flatten, my back started to arch upward and my neck to shorten. My motions suddenly felt clipped, disjointed, and my breath less deep. Soon my boots, still wet from their plunge in the stream, clomped on the grass. As the mist thinned somewhat, I started searching for the yellow cluster I had remembered. For several minutes I looked, without success. Was my vision now too poor to spot it? Had the roving mist swallowed it completely? Uh, finally, there it was. I hurried over and picked one of the curling, hair-covered leaves. Stiffly, I ran back to the others. Here, I panted, holding the leaf in my palm. I need to wrap this around your tooth. Holly whimpered, her whole body quaking. It will help, I coaxed. At least, it's supposed to. She gave a fearful moan. Then, as Aramon gently nudged her neck, she opened her mouth and lifted her tongue, exposing the bloody tooth. Delicately, very delicately, I ran my fingertip along its surface. Suddenly, my finger picked a tiny pebble wedged into a crack. With a tug, I wrenched it free. Though Halia bellied, bellowed again, she continued to hold her mouth open long enough for me to wrap the leaf over her tooth in gum. Just as I finished, she jerked her head away. That should do it, I said, sounding less sure than I would have liked. Slowly, Halia's lips pinched. She shuddered, tilting her head from one side to the other. I felt certain that she was about to spit out the leaf. But she did not spit. Instead, her brown eyes flitted toward me. This tastes terrible, like rotting oak bark or worse. She paused, hesitating. Still, it does feel a little better. Aramon's great head bobbed. We are grateful, young hawk. Suddenly feeling as shy as the doe, I turned aside. Not as grateful as I am to have been a deer, for a while at least. You shall walk with hooves again soon, and often if the magic lasts. He glanced at his sister, whose tongue was playing lightly over the crumpled leaf. For now, though, we are glad you have fingers. Halia took a step nearer. And, she began, taking a slow breath, knowledge, real knowledge. I thought men and women had forsaken the language of the land, of the plants, the seasons, the stones, for the language of written words. Not all men and women, I replied, tapping the hilt of my sword. I half grinned. Believe me, I've learned a few things from stone. My thoughts turned to Capri, forever finding treasures between the covers of books. The written word has its own virtues, though. She eyed me skeptically. It's true, I explained. Reading a passage in a book is like, well, like following tracks. No, no, that's not it. More like finding the meaning in the tracks. Where they're going, why they're sprinting or limping, how they're different from the day before. Halia said nothing more, though she swiveled her ears as if she were intrigued. At that instant, the wind shifted. A gap opened in the mist around us, allowing a few gleams, gleaming shafts of light to burst through. The rays poured over the shoots of eelgrass, making them seem to glow from within. She sighed. How beautiful. I nodded. Don't you love, she said quietly, the way the mist moves, like a shadow made of water. I ceased nodding. Myself, I was watching the sunlight, not the mist how it paints the reeds and whatever else it touches. Hmm. Her ears twitched. So you saw light while I saw motion. So it seems. Two different sides of the same moment. Aramon released a throaty sound, almost a chuckle. Shredding mist wove through his antlers. All of a sudden, the wind shifted again. The stag stiffened, his nostrils quivering. Holia chewed nervously on the leaf. That smell... What is it? For quite some time he did not answer, did not move. At last he lowered his rack. 
It is the smell, he declared, of death. Okay, my friends. So that is chapter 15. So we will read chapter 16 tomorrow called Dreams Yet Unhatched. So have a wonderful night and I hope to see you all tomorrow.